Welcome to Veterans United, a program sponsored by the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. I'm Nick Howland, Navy veteran, your host, and executive director of the Firewatch. In this program, you'll meet two or three veterans who will share their challenges and experiences since leaving active duty. You'll also meet a couple civilians who are doing great things for veterans here in Northeast Florida. In the meantime, you can help. There's a role for everybody. Visit thefirewatch.org and register as a watchstander. Learn to identify the risk signs of veterans in crisis. Learn to get veterans the help they need. Together, we can end veteran suicide here in Northeast Florida. Enjoy the program. Welcome to the Five Minute Salute, a program hosted by the Firewatch and focused on great things that veterans are doing in our community in Northeast Florida. I'm Nick Howland, your host, Navy veteran and executive director of the Firewatch. And with me today is Pete Langlois, who is not only a partner at Ascendo Resources, but also host of a great tele uh, radio program in Jacksonville called Hard Worker with Pete the Job Guy. Pete, thanks for joining us today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Nick. It's great to see you again. Yeah, so tell us about Hard Worker and what you do on the radio show. Well, Hard Worker is a, is a radio show I was on for two and a half years on WOKV. Now yeah. it's broadcasted nationally on the PTJG Broadcast Network Fantastic. Uh, as a podcast. Uh, and it focuses on giving people tips and advice to help them to be more effective and productive but I'm also a very outspoken veterans advocate. Yeah. And I bring a lot of veterans on and a lot of causes that are gonna help veterans uh, in, in, the, in the civilian world or help them in any way. I'm also a watchstander with Firewatch. All right, so. thank you, Pete. <laughs> and I do have to say, Pete is from Boston. So hard worker is easy for him to say. <laughs> I'm from Chicago. It's very difficult. So I want to say, tell me about the hard worker program, Pete. Right. But that's not how it's pronounced. It's hard worker. <laughs> you know, when I grew up in Massachusetts, a blue collar town, probably yeah. uh, 20 minutes north of Boston, the biggest compliment you could give somebody wasn't, you know, hey, Pete, he's the best looking. He's the, <laughs> he's the richest or the yeah. smartest kid in the room. It's that Pete. He's the hot, he's a hard worker. <laughs> that was the best thing, but that stuck with me through life. And every, I brought that mentality with me and still do. Everything I've ever done, I've worked the hard, as hard as I could. Because even if you're in a job, Nick, that might not be your forever job, if you work your hardest while you're there, you can turn it into your forever job. You'll get noticed and promoted. Things happen and doors open with hard work. Absolutely. And your radio show, I've listened to it probably 20 times, you know, if not more. Yeah. And, and I wish I could listen to every single one because you learn so many great things about how to search for a job, how to find your meaningful career. Tell me about some of the veterans that you've had on the program um, and some of the challenges maybe that they've faced um, and that you've helped them through. Well, well, great. One of them is when I had uh, uh, a veteran come on and talk about just time after time failure to the point where it was a point of ex exhaustion. Yeah. Basically gave up uh, before going to a program that transitions military into uh, the civilian world and it changed her life. Yeah. And, and she uh, just told a story and, and I had tears in my eyes because yeah. I could relate. That transition is hard yeah. and it's very difficult for a lot of people. But when I see it, uh, you know, come to fruition, it puts a smile on my face. That's why I love to help veterans. Yeah, right. And would you um, uh, say that you're helping veterans even far outside of the Northeast Florida area now that you've been picked up and actually syndicated nationally? You're probably hosting folks and taking calls from all over the, the country. I, I do. I, yeah. I, you know, and uh, any veteran that ever wants to reach out to me for a career advice, it's Pete at PeteTheJobGuy.com. Yep. And, uh, you know, I get all kinds of questions and email but, you know, I help place them. It's not right. a one and done, hey, try this, do that. Yeah. I work with them. Let's bolster your LinkedIn profile. Let's yeah. get you some skills that are going to make you more uh, purchasable, that people want to buy your skill set and bring right. you on to the team. And I help them. You know, one of the other things is a lot of veterans programs that are out there, Nick. Yep. And I love supporting those programs and bringing those people on my, on my show because, they're, again, they're helping people. Yeah. 
Well, and I got to say, I mean, you, you've been a recruiter and a career coach for all of your career for the most right. part. Um, and you do great things helping people. But now getting out there and broadcasting, you know, tips and resources and things like that to mm -hmm. a, a larger general audience is, is getting that service out there even more. Right. What made you take that leap from actually uh, uh, being a recruiter and, you know, receiving calls from potential clients or, and, and getting them service to actually um, being a, becoming a radio personality. Right. There's a lot of recruiters out there. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's a sales position, right? The right. more people you place, the more money you make. It is right. a commissionable thing, but I've always taken it to the next level. I like helping people and I yeah. like money too. Sure. Yeah. That's great. But I, you know, my undergraduate degree is in training and development and adult education. Right. And I like to help and coach and train people. And I've done it for a long time through training in Dale Carnegie. I was a tra training manager for a while. So I said, hey, wait a second. I got a little bit of the gift of gab. Yeah. I like to help people. Uh, I can take, you know, it, it's. It, I was on a, a radio show, a nationally syndicated show as a guest one time. And I was giving career advice. And he was wrestling with my last name. And he yeah. says, hey, Pete Lang, I'm just going to call you Pete the job guy. He said that. So, so he said, do you mind taking some live calls from callers? And I said, no. I took a lot of live calls and I was helping people right then and there. I don't know what they're going to throw at me, but people don't pay me for my advice. It's free and I help them and I do my best to help them. And I became a regular guest and then I got into the business. Well, thanks for doing that for Northeast Florida. Sure. Career folks and for veterans. Yes, yes. How can people tune in to Hard Worker with Pete the Job Guy? Well, you can always Google up Pete... Uh, Pete the Job Guy. Yep. You just do a search. I'm on Spotify, Apple, um, any of the big networks. You can go to my website, uh, PeteTheJobGuy.com, and you can see all. You can listen to all my past episodes. Pete, thanks for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. Thanks again, Nick. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of the Five Minute Salute. That one was with Pete the Job Guy from the radio program Hard Worker. What a great episode. The Firewatch is Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody to play. Join us and become a watchstander today. Visit thefirewatch.org. You'll learn about the risk signs of veterans in crisis. You'll learn how to get veterans the help they need. Together, we will end veteran suicide. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of From the C-Suite to the C-Suite, a program sponsored by the Firewatch and focused on the successful transitions of active duty military members to civilian business life. I'm Nick Howland, your host, Navy veteran and executive director of the Firewatch. And with me today is fellow Navy veteran and IT professional, Bill Thomas. Bill, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for asking me. So we talked a little bit before the program and your career after you got out of the Navy was, was IBM, Federal Services, Walmart IT, and now you're with PwC here in Northeast Florida, all focused on IT. Tell me a little bit more. Yeah, certainly. Uh, always been interested in computers. Yep. Um, even worked on that in the Navy. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, definite springboard to, to my career. Um, but uh, love, love solving problems. And, yep. and that's a lot of what I do is, is, you know, I solve problems, make things, make computers easier to use for the end users, you yeah. know, and, and make it so it's a, a seamless, easy, easy use, you know, right. that, that's what it's all about, right? And you, in the Navy, you served seven years. I think you were a data systems uh, tech, yes. DS, got out as a DS2. Correct. Um, what did you do in the Navy that, uh, from, from a data systems, what does a DS do? The data systems, we maintain and repair the, the combat tactical data systems. Uh, I served on two aircraft carriers, yeah. uh, Independence and Kennedy. Um, managed to do three med, or two med and one med IO crews um, in three and a half years. Okay. Um, finished out at uh, Sinclair Fleet in Norfolk, uh, working same basic stuff, you know, just, just maintaining and repairing all the various computer systems. Is there a lot of correlation with what you did in the Navy and what you do now? Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of what I learned in the Navy, you know, problem solving, uh, how to find a problem, how to zero in on it, right? Because, well, in the civilian world, it, it, things aren't quite the same. The, the stakes aren't the same. Um, you know, we're dealing with dollars instead of lives. Right. Ships right? aren't going to go ships, dead in the water. Airplanes will not fly, uh, fall out of the sky. Right. Yeah. Um, but I did work, you know, with... with uh, the aircraft and, and linking all the tactical data systems, right? Um, to make sure that the, the each 
each ship had the right view of the current tactical situation. Okay. All right. So, uh, and radar, you get to think about it. If there's a missile coming at your ship, your radar picture is very small. Yep. Right. But another ship in another distance is going to see it long wise mm -hmm. and pick it up better. So they may see it and you don't. And that's kind of what our system did. So with so much commonality between your Navy systems and what you're doing now, that transition for you from active duty military to civilian life, um, particularly the IT business world, must have been fairly seamless. And is that a w good way to characterize it? It is. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's different problems. Yep. But it's still problem solving. It's still presenting the right data to the people. Um, it, it's discovering risk. It's it's managing change. I mean, it's it's all... You know, it, it's consistent and it's and it's necessary. And you knew, based on our conversation before the um, program or before this interview, you knew going into the military that you were going in for the GI Bill to go to college afterwards. So tell us about that, and tell us when you were at college. I, I know you said you interacted pretty regularly with the Veteran Service Office at the university. So yes, I did. Um, I started at a branch campus in, yep. at the university, so we didn't have the Veterans Office there. So it was a little bit a little bit rougher. But once I got to main campus at Penn State. Uh, I hooked up with the veterans office and, and they introduced me to so many different things. Um, like when you do student aid, mm -hmm. right? If you've just transitioned out, your all your student aid is based on what your, what your earnings are, right? Um, but if you just transitioned out of the service, you can actually base your student aid on expected income as opposed to last year's income. So you obviously, if you're in college, you're not expected to be making what you were making even while you were on active duty. Mm -hmm. So, boom, all of a sudden, you've got a whole lot more aid available to you. Yep. Uh, and the Veterans Office was able to help me with that, and they actually even gave me um, stu uh, work study. So I worked with them, maintaining their computers in their office, a couple hours you know, every day during, during the school year. Did the Veterans Service Office help you find that first job at IBM Federal, or was that the, the, no, that, that the was, careers office? That at, was the careers at office at the, at, yeah. the, at the school. So, and, and it is very good. I mean, most schools, most large schools anyway, have resources like that, you know. Right. And um, but like like you mentioned with IBM, I actually started working with their federal systems on a Navy contract. Uh. So my experience was was a wonderful gain for them, um, and it made the whole interview process a whole lot easier. Fantastic. Well, actually, you know, that's one resource we don't hear as much when we do these interviews is the veteran office at a university, which helps tremendously, particularly with folks who leverage their GI Bill benefits coming out of the service. Um, they can get the added plus of, of, and particularly in big universities like Penn State or Florida or Florida State or UNF. We have a very strong veterans office here at UNF. Yeah. Added benefit of tapping into expertise and, and um, um, peers uh, through that veteran service office. Yes. Um, the, and there's also, before you, before you get out while you're still in, you can work with the career transition office. And I did, um, where you can take your military experience and convert it to college credits. Oh, right. Um, unfortunately a lot of my schooling was classified and they wouldn't <laughs> share it. Uh, so I wind up taking, I did wind up taking several classes that I knew already from, you know, doing it in the service. And I didn't get the credit for them because the Navy wouldn't share the, the curriculum yep. um, because it was classified. But it wound up being an easy A and a GPA booster. Oh, fantastic. So. Well, Bill, thanks for sharing your experiences. And um, I think there's a lot of veterans who could learn from it. And if those who are getting ready to transition are planning to use their GI Bill, they need to know that the Veteran Service Office at the university they're going to could help them tremendously get steered on the correct course um, in civilian life. Yeah, and and then and, and help them with financial aid and help them with, you know, for like sure. said, work study for while you're in school. For sure. Bill Thomas, uh, PWC uh, executive and Northeast Florida veteran. Bill, thanks again for being with us. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of From the C-Suite to the C-Suite. The Firewatch is Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody to play. Join us as a watchstander today. Visit thefirewatch.org. You'll learn about the risk signs of veterans in crisis. You'll learn how to get veterans the help they need. Together, we will end veteran suicide. Thank you.
I'm Nick Howland, Executive Director of the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. Veterans at risk of homelessness are five times more likely to attempt suicide. This December 31st, the CDC will be lifting its restrictions on residential evictions. Thousands of struggling veterans could find themselves without a home. You can help. If you know a veteran at risk, direct him or her to thefirewatch.org, where we maintain a veteran's resources guide. Everything from emergency financial assistance to transitional housing. Together, we will end veteran suicide. Welcome to another episode of From the C-Suite to the C-Suite, a program sponsored by the Firewatch and focused on highlighting the successful transitions of active duty military members to veteran civilian life, particularly into the business world. I'm Nick Howland, your host, Navy veteran and executive director of the Firewatch. And with me today is Matthew Arniotis, the founder and owner of Pub's Chicken Rubs. Matthew, thanks for being with us. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about Pub's Chicken Rubs. First of all, I love the name. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Where, um, where's the name come from? And then tell me about okay, it. Okay, so the pubs part is a nickname that I was given uh, <laughs> while in, on active duty. Um, yeah. Pubs, obviously, for being a bar. Yeah. Uh, and then chicken rubs, you know, kind of catchy. That's why. It's awesome. Yeah. Put together. Yep. It rhymes. It does. Yeah, yeah no yeah, better name. Does. Exactly. So tell me what you do. Uh, currently, right now, what I do is I make my own sauces and marinades. Uh, I built this company probably officially about two years ago, but I've been making this sauce and perfecting it for about seven. What are some of your best sauces? Uh, right now is the galantro sauce. Yeah. It's a spicy, tangy sauce, kind of all purpose. You can marinate with it, cook with it. I have friends that actually use it as a ch uh, chip dip. Um, right now I'm also working on a uh, jerk uh, seasoning as well right now. Well, I, I love the names. First of all, pubs, <laughs> chicken rubs, but also galantro. So galantro. tell me where the name comes from. Uh, because some of the main seasonings or items that are go to make this sauce is uh, cilantro, garlic, and lemon juice. Wow. And that's all I'm going to give you. You've got, <laughs> you've, you've got a talent for naming things. Yes. So I yes. can't wait till you name the jerk sauce. Right. right. <laughs> That'll I'm, be I'm a lot of fun. i with that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Matthew, tell me a little bit about your um, military experience, uh, fellow uh, Navy yep. veteran like me. Yes, sir. Um, you were in for 20 years. 20 years. Just and retired. you just recently transitioned out. Yes. Tell me... Um, about what you did in the Navy first. So when I came in in September of 2000, um, I came in as a mess manager specialist. Yep. Uh, cook, basically. Yep. Uh, then the Navy changed our name about 2004, 2005 yep. to culinary specialist. It makes us sound really good in yeah, the right. civilian sector. Yeah. Um, I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia yep. uh, for four and a half years. Then I was, went to Brooklyn, New York as a recruiter. Then I was stationed on the USS Peleliu. Okay. In San Diego, California for five and a half years. I stayed in California for about nine, finished my tour here in Mayport on the USS Sullivan's. I was a San Diego sailor too, a uh, destroyer. Tell me a little bit, well, without upsetting people, do you like the West Coast better or the East Coast Navy better? I like the West Coast. Navy. Oh, dear. Yeah, I do. Really? I okay. Do. Yeah. Definitely. And I do want to say, uh, listening to you talk about your Navy experience, the the MS is now CS is yes. the most important rate in the Navy. Absolutely. Hands down. Absolutely. Yep. So tell me about your transition, getting out. Did you know that you wanted to be a business owner? Um, after 20 years of the service, I kind of didn't know what I want to do, but I had the one idea of I don't want to work for anyone else anymore. Yeah. I wanted to be my own boss. That's what I knew what I wanted to do. And I just kind of didn't know what direction to go in until uh, people actually started really wanting me to make the sauce and buy it from me. Okay. So, and now you're shipping galantro all over, all the, over country. the U.S. Yes. Fantastic. Where are you finding some of your core customer base? California, actually. California. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Kelston Moore, is a chef in uh, San Diego, went viral with uh, my sauce. And it, I wasn't ready for that type of uh, explosion on yeah. the business. So it, it, it went uh, viral and crazy. And now I'm, I'm playing catch up. Fantastic. But promise me you're going to stay in Northeast Florida. Absolutely. You will grow your business in Northeast yes. Florida. Yes. Fantastic. Definitely. Good stuff. Um, tell me how people can find you at, uh, at Pub Chicken Rubs. Uh, right now I have a Facebook page for Pubs Chicken Rubs. Yep. And then on Instagram, it's Pubs underscore Chicken underscore Rubs underscore. Uh, yeah, that's it. Fantastic. Yeah. Anything you want to tell uh, veterans out there who um, are getting ready to go through a transition like yourself? Um, advice you might want to impart on? Utilize um, the VA. Utilize everything 
they uh, offer the TGPS or TAPS class. Uh, it's a great program. It prepares us. Um, wounded Warriors for our, for our vets. Um, they'll answer. They do the research for us. Um, and everyone else that, that they know, mentors that, uh, how, that has gone through what they go through, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Great. Great advice. Matthew Arniotis. Pub's Chicken Rubs, which it is. if uh, you're a veteran, undoubtedly you're going to like sauces and marinades. Go to yes. Pub's Chicken Rubs and buy Matthew's sauces. So we support our, our ourselves and each other, right? Yes, absolutely. That's right. Thanks again for being here. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of From the C-Suite to the C-Suite. The Firewatch is Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody. Join us at www thefirewatch.org and become a watchstander today. You'll learn the risk signs of veterans in crisis and you'll learn how to get veterans the help they need. Together, we can end veteran suicide. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of From the C-Suite to the C-Suite, a program sponsored by the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. In this program, we focus on members of the Northeast Florida community, veterans who have transferred from active duty military successfully to a business career. I'm Nick Howland, your host, executive director of the Firewatch and Navy veteran. And with me today is Eric McGargle, the owner of Five Star Painting. Eric, thanks for being with us today. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Yeah, tell us a little bit about what Five Star Painting does. Uh, yes, sir. So we're a five-star painting. Uh, we're a franchise. We are painting contractors, yep. and we focus mainly on residential and light industrial uh, jobs, interior, exterior. And what we do uh, is we will hire different contractors uh, that we work with regularly. And what that does is that allows us to keep our availability much okay. more open than many other crews. Okay. So we can handle maybe four or five different jobs at a time. And then also having different crews, we can always make sure that we're putting our best foot forward uh, with any job that we have. So it's not uncommon to come into something that might be outside of the realm of painting. And I can make sure that I put the proper crew on the proper job all the time. Awesome. And you and I were talking before we started, um, this is a franchise that you've acquired. Yes, sir. And you pretty much own rights for everything from the river to the beaches? Yes, sir. Awesome. What made you take that leap to buy the franchise? Yeah, so um, being in the military, um, it was an easy transition for me to go from the military to a franchise because a franchise is a proven system. Right. It's a process, um, and as long as you follow that, um, it's, it will do it will perform for you. You know, that's one thing that we definitely learned in the military. You know, you follow the procedures yeah. and you'll accomplish the mission. And that's what I'm doing right now. Well, like me, you were Navy, you were a gas turbine tech. So you know something about procedures. I yes, mean, you, you've got to follow procedures to keep those engines running. Tell me a little bit about your Navy experience, ships you were on, yes, sir. where you were. So um, I was, I joined in 2008 and initially I was on the USS NHTSA, it's a DDG up in Norfolk. Sweet. I was there for Tin a couple of years. Yes, you got it. Absolutely. Yeah. Then uh, in 2013, I moved down here. I came to the maintenance facility okay. here at CERMAC. And then from there, I went to the LCS, the new ships that are coming in. I was on the USS Little Rock. I was there until 2018, uh, where I finally uh, started to transition out of the Navy. So before we get into your transition, let me ask you this. I was on a destroyer and then ended up doing another division officer tour and then got out. But I have not seen the LCSs. Tell me real quick <laughs> um, how you felt about the destroyers and the LCSs, the differences, you know, what you like better. Yeah, absolutely. So they're two completely different worlds. You know, uh, one of yeah. the big things with the LCS is they're uh, minimally manned. So it's approximately the same size as the DDG, but we could easily have half the crew on there. Right. So it's, it's interesting. It's two completely different sides of the Navy that I got to see, you know, the traditional Navy and then one where we're automating everything, you know, so you can pretty much control probably 90% of the LCS from a, 
a monitor. <laughs> That's neat. I didn't get to see that. Yeah, for sure. I, the destroyer I was on was built in 1979, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could not control most of it from the bridge. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, to the transition, how? what was the biggest challenge you faced when you got out of the Navy and transitioned it? So the, the biggest transition for me was just um, maintaining that discipline that I had learned in the Navy, being able to go out and especially being a business owner, now I don't have you know my chief or my divo telling me that I need to be into work at 6.30 or whatever time it is, I need to go ahead and take that initiative to do that in order to be successful. Right. You know, that's one thing that is um, definitely a huge difference between being a business owner and being in the military. There's not so many people there to make sure that you're doing the job that you need to, but if you don't, you, you're not going to be able to be successful. Well, and like you said earlier, a, a franchise gives you kind of a, a turnkey operation mm -hmm. with processes already in place, which, you know, you being familiar with those processes allows you to kind of step in and, and take control right away. And you've, you've had a great start. Five yes. Star, you told me earlier, is about nine months old. Yes, sir. And you're busy as can be. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there for sure. You know, um, it is a bit of a hurdle, you know, with COVID and everything. Uh, but we're doing everything we can. We're making sure that we take the proper precautions, make sure that any of our customers uh, feel comfortable with us being in their homes. And uh, we're just plugging away. We're, we're getting there for sure. Awesome. Eric, how can people find you at Five Star? Yeah, so uh, we do have an Instagram page. We have Facebook. Uh, we have a uh, website as well, uh, Five Star Painting of East Jacksonville. But really the best way to get a hold of me is to just call my personal number. Uh, it's 224-627-4786. If anybody calls me, that's my personal number, and I'd be happy to take care of anybody. Awesome. Eric McGargle, Five Star Painting, East Jacksonville. Thanks for being with us. And veterans, support your veteran-owned businesses. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of From the C-Suite to the C-Suite. The Firewatch is Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody. Join us. Visit thefirewatch.org. Become a watchstander today. Learn the risk signs of veterans in crisis. Learn how to get a veteran the help they need. And learn how to stop veteran suicide. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching Veterans United. At the Firewatch, we have one mission, and that's to end veteran suicide. You can help. Please visit us at thefirewatch.org and enroll as a watchstander. By doing so, you'll learn the risk signs of a veteran in crisis, you'll learn how to ask a veteran if he or she needs help, and you'll learn where to direct that veteran for resources. Together, we can end veteran suicide. Again, thanks for joining us on Veterans United, and be sure to tune in next week. <laughs> That'll get me smiling or turning away, no eye contact with the camera. <laughs>